uh, as um, there is uh, at the moment this other ARP exhibition, ARP in Poland. And um, I just asked, uh, it's in Posan, and the, it is until the 9th of July. Uh, and anybody who's in Berlin, who comes to Berlin, it's just two and a half hours from there. So there's, uh, you should go and um, see that exhibition. And I've just decided, yes, I will go and give the good example. Um, so we are now the last talk before the coffee break uh, by uh, Marta Smolinska, and it's on this big theme of Polish, in this case then, neo-avant-garde in reference to Hans Arp, and uh, she is one of the co-curators of this exhibition. Marta, to you. Thank you. So let me continue. <laughs> let me continue this commercial break. <laughs> so, <laughs> in the name of Michael Steinkamp and mine, I invite you to Poznan, and you can see the catalogue of the exhibition. So, organic form, hapticity, and space as a primary being. Paul is represented on guard in reference to Hans Arp. In the 1920s and 30s, representatives of Polish avant-garde living in Paris came into contact with Hans Arp. However, fascination with his oeuvre is evident also in the Polish art of neo-avant-garde. To date, this subject has not been addressed by art historians. While we cannot refer here to a biomorphic uniform current, we can indicate artistic attitudes where organic forms play the key role. The aspects which do not cease to inspire successive generations of artists influenced by the author of the sculpture titled Biomorphic to be exposed or lost in the woods are first and foremost the organic and biomorphic character of form as well as the related haptic tactile nature which entices the sense of touch. The way I see it, hapticity does not elim eliminate the operation of eyesight but sets it in motion under different principles, for example in collaboration with touch. Furthermore, I would point out the process like nature of the work of art which comes close to the idea of natura naturans defined by Baruch de Spinoza. Of special significance are for me also the potential of chance, the intention to create like nature outside of the conventions prevalent in the realm of art. The multiple layers of biomorphic shapes and the definition of space in terms of immutable being primarily with respect to the objects operating within it. The above issues has been addressed in Polish art in their own ways by Maria Jarema, Maria Pinińska, Beres, Maria Paparostkowska, so the only artist in this group to have known art personally, Alina Szapocznikow, Jan Berdyszak, Jerzy Górawski, Andrzej Pawłowski, Bolesław Utkin. Their works are, not, uh, are an unconscious or conscious dialogue with the artist whom Jan Brzenkowski saw as the inventor of a a geometric sculpture. Art history has not adopted the term a geometry, which uses notions such as the organic and the biomorphic regarded sim simultaneously as abstract and related to nature. Not, however, to its external appearance, but to the processes taking place within it. Based on his observations of nature, Arp endeavored to come up with such a way of perception which would be free from associations with objects and focu focused rather on processes and the cosmic order in the background. The first use of the notion of biomorphic in reference to art, art in 1935 is tied with the English poet and critic Geoffrey Grigson who borrowed it from the natural sciences in order to differentiate it from geometrical abstraction. In turn, the notion of organic in reference to sculpture was 
introduced by Rudolf Belling in 1921 in the title of his own sculpture, Organische Formen, Schreit and der Mann. He used the term to stress the effect of motion and life. In this concept, Arp himself drew on the notion of concrete art. We don't want to copy nature, we don't want to reproduce, we want to produce, we want to produce like a plant that produces a fruit and not to reproduce, we want to produce directly and not through interpretation. As there is not the slightest trace of abstraction in this art, we call it concrete art. Since, 19, uh, since 1934, he titled his organic sculptures Concrétion Imen, indicated nature, indicating nature-like dynamic processes of densification and expansion of matter. In the introduction to the first English issue of Arp's text in 1948, Robert Motherwell stressed as follows, I quote, his process is slow and even as nature's carving that he has the, the effect of water run over human stones. The end of quotation. Arp's fascination with biomorphic form and chance, inseparable from the working of nature, was shared by Andrzej Pawłowski. The pioneer use of chance helped Arp transform the role of the artist who no longer expressed himself or herself in the work of art, but rather an imaginary situation whose potential they recognize and develop. The essence of the work of art, which is created unintentionally to some shift of the principle of its creation from the artist's decision and ability to some uncontrolled process. Pawłowski, the promoter of the idea of natural form, in 1966 announced a text where he opts for creating favorable conditions for the operation of self-regulating system, systems. I quote, forms created in such a process remains perfect, even if they are stripped of life or preclude the possibility of further perfection. Skeleton shell. The end of quotation. The artist then calls for attempts to reach a genuine, true, and perfect shape in artificial conditions, setting in motion circumstances where the surface of painting or the shape of a sculpture will receive their structure in a process resembling the operation of nature. Therefore, the artist must determine the preliminary conditions of the process and initiate it in, and initiate it, whereas subsequently the work should come into being as if in itself within the self-regulating system, inclusive also the potential of chance. In this way, artists may break free from the habit of composing and their own subjectivity, effectively rejecting intentionality and yielding to the operation of a creative action. When referring to his own haptic and organic sculpture, Hans Arp stressed that when sculpting in plaster, he never thinks delib deliberately, but succumbing to automatism is led by the work, and the only thing he does is move his hands. Pawłowski's method, applied in the series mannequins and skeletons, in turn, involved the puring of dry plaster with an admixture of sawdust into canvas, sack-like forms which the artist suit special, uh, specific, specifically uh, for, his, for this purpose. The sacks were later stitched together, thrown into the water, and after they got saturated with water and the plaster hardened, they were picked up from the bath. The following stage of the creative process consisted in the removal of the fabrics and the work on the surface of the shape obtained in this way, with special emphasis of retaining and highlighting its organic, round shapes with hardness hardened into ready objects, assumed organic, round shapes with hardness hardened into ready objects, ultimately covered with patina. A different kind of ambivalence is inscribed in the birth of a mannequin, an object 
which, uh, an object which simultaneously appears immobile and gives the impression of pulsating with intense life underneath, a tension associated with the process of emerging, forming or coming into world. Uh, into the world. Uh, there is totening in it as if one form issued out from the other, as well as a singular embryonality of an element coming upwards. Resorting to the met method of naturally shaped form, Pawłowski succeeds with splendid accuracy in showing the phenomenon of birth with its organicity balancing on the verge of non-formedness or of formedness and, of the, and the happening of biological provenance. The effect, the effect turned out to be feasible thanks to partly controlled coincidence and relying on the intuition of plaster, which achieves its form while hardening and drying up. As Pawłowski wrote in reference to the white skeleton, I quote, the stigma of the process, of the manner in which it was made, makes it genuine and authentic, the end of quotation. These features are attained thanks to yielding to the instinct of plaster or salt and helping them harden into structures obtained in this way. It follows then that the painting transcends its surface in, uh, and starts to resemble a work of nature, hardening like the eponymous skeleton and ossifying into a kind of intriguing object entering into relation with its environment. With this haptic surface, uh, with, it, with its haptic surface, it seduces not only the eye, but also the touch, offering its surfaces revealing both the, through the rough fabric of the canvas, as well as protuberances which frequently due to being saturated with paint are smooth and glistening, stimulating haptic vision. The shapes of certain elements resemble bonds, which correlates with the series title, but may also evoke associations with the lay of sea bottom or a water surface rippling in the wind. However, regardless of the direction of associations, all of them remain in the domain of naturally shaped forms, thanks to which the image becomes palpable, intensely present, organic, and perfect light perfect like a creation of nature. I would venture to say that the author of the idea of a natural form would no doubt share Arp's intention to exhibit sculptures in nature. The title of work to be exposed in the woods originates in the game in its author played together with his friends, the, poem, the po uh, poet Camille Briand. Saun uh, sauntering in the forest, they installed the works directly on the grass and on the trees. They imagined who's, uh, who might come them across, asking with her this was the work of a bird. Mannequins and white skeleton, too, have the potential to feed into nature. The smooth and round surface, surfaces in Arp and Pawłowski obtained uh, due to the use of plaster rivet attention and triggered the desire to experience the evident differences between them with the sense of touch too. Margarita Andreotti observes that it was plaster that helped Arp become uh, became a pioneer of biomorphic sculpture. This was precisely the material he first was able to come up with, having an ideally round shape. In turn, Barbara Hepworth wrote the plaster as a material was dead for her, as offering no tactile pleasure, whereas after visiting the master's atelier, she understood that it, too, can emanate movement and inner life. Arp was not interested in the ideal circle and sphere, but in the oval. He considered ovals to be perfect, the simplest forms shared by all natural elements, additionally symbolic of eternal and organic transformations. Round stones embodied the oval shape for Arp. He would passionately gather them, collect and arrange directly on the lake shore, for example in Ascona into so-called constellations. He believed that these actions freed him from the need to sketch biomorphic shapes, 
prior to their execution. He wanted his sculpture to be as concrete and sensual as round pebbles. This fascination was shared by one Polish woman artist, Alina Szapocznikow. Her sculpture you can see here in Otterlo in the sculpture garden. In 1967, uh, uh, Szapocznikow made a game of round pebbles, a bronze object composed of an intended surface and 17 polished pebbles, ideally matching the uh, indentations. The work was meant to be touched. Viewers could pick up the round stones, warm them in their hands, and finally place in their corresponding holes, in, uh, incessantly reconstructing and deconstructing the constellation envisaged by the artist. Shapochnikov stressed that she was indebted to nature and her entire approach to art is biological. I would moreover venture to observe that the question of hapticity closely linked to the organic form resembling round pebbles is also addressed by objects such as figure of uh, 1956 uh, by Maria Yarema. Yarema's small brass sculpture resembles three round pebbles of varying sizes set at different heights. The work features also a round base, precisely like those favored by Arp. He believed that they emboldened viewers to circle the sculpture and have a look at uh, it from all sides. The predil this predilection and might be tied with the artist's intention to question the traditional division into the front, back, and side views, for example, with the demand to liberate the sculpture from the tyranny of the front and rear, bottom and top, from a specific orientation in space. Yerema's figure meets these demands and can be looked at from every possible angle. The haptic quality, which has not, has, uh, not, which has not been so far indicated by scholars dealing with the art of the author of the sculpture title to be exposed in the woods, are to me one of the most inspiring issues. Their reminiscences can be found in Polish art. Arp described himself in his poems as born in nature and having five senses. In his work, Das Tagesgerippe, he wrote, Mit geschlossenen Augen taste ich mich durch den Glanz, while many a, photo, uh, a photograph from his studio show him and encourage his visitors to touch his work. Stimulation of the sense of touch, underappreciated in the side-centered culture of Western Europe, is organically tied with biomorphic shapes, which, as stressed by Gaston Bachelard, demanded on the phenomenology of round forms, arrest the touch and actually demand caresses as everything oval and round. Shapochnikov's game of round pebbles may be then juxtaposed with Arp's works from the nearly 1930s, uh, such as sculpture to be exposed in the woods and have had with annoying objects. The small elements of both works were not initially fixed. They were supposed to be touched, assembled, assembled and reassembled at, at will. Only later, to protect them against damage, they were fixed for good. As in Shapochnikov's game of round pebbles, the small haptic forms rested in a kind of bowl, a plinth, a plinth of sorts, and invited viewers to interact with them. The scale of the round pebble stresses that artist was adjusted to the human hand. Stephanie Paley stresses that Arp's early plaster sculptures, meant to be touched, were of surrealist and Dadaist origin and were connected with the deconstruction of the aura of untouchable works of art and the only proper form of perception seen as contemplation. The common de denominator of the sculpture to be exposed in the woods and Shapochnikov's game of round pebbles is then their intended interaction with the viewer and their activation of the sense of touch. 
Hapticity in ARP and in Polish artists is not only a matter of actual tactile contact between the recipient and the work, but also a comprehensive cooperation between the sense of touch and that of sight. Presenting sculptures such as to be exposed in the woods and head with anaic objects in museums makes us touch them with our eyes. Maurice Merleau-Ponty treats vision as a kind of touch. Seeing is touching with the sense of sight. Yi Fu Tuan backs him up saying that most tactile impressions reach us indire indirectly, uh, indirectly uh, through the eyes. According to the author of The Visible and the Invisible, the touch of the eyes is a kind of sensory touch and the division between the senses seems to be too coarse. Um, the visible morphs into the tangible, the tangible into the visible, as a result of which the view of the visible is no more nor less than the haptic qualities. These qualities can be found in greedy dreams by Maria Pinińska Beres. The, uh, the organic layered form made of foam covered with a fabric and painted in various uh, hues of pink also evoke an erotic aura. It is corporeal, built with wavy lines and haptic. It seems to be in constant optic motion. Such associations are additionally enhanced by the title. Arp stressed that an ambiguous and poetic title of work is of paramount importance for him on a par with the work itself. The artist wrote that he was playing with words the way a child plays with the building's blocks. To his mind, they are fresh and mysterious and provoke people to touch and bend them like sculptures. The work by Maria Pinińska Beres bears a poetic title. The artist plays not only with biomorphic shapes, but also with the words that depict them stressing greed and insensibility of haptic imagination. A conscious fascination with Arp's work can be found in the ever of Maria Papa Rostkowska, who personally met the master artist through her husband, Giuseppe and Theo Papa. Under the pen name of San Lazzaro, this Italian writer and theoretician was the head of the Ventieme Siècle magazine, issued in Paris since 1938. Thanks to his editorial work, he made friends with the leading avant-garde authors. During the sculptor's exhibition in Milan, critic Flaminio Gualdoni dubbed Maria Paparoskowska Arp's spiritual sister. According to him, pattern on Arp, Rostkowska said, I quote, we do not want to imitate, we want to create. We want to create like a plant creates a fruit, without multiplying it. We want to produce directly rather than indirectly. As the Italian critic implies further, the marble, organic, haptic, and biological shapes by Papa Rostkowska are born like live organisms and are characterized by fresh biomorphic form. The artist had a vivid memory of Arp's Arp, which made an indelible imprint in her own work. I quote one critic from France. Maria Papa Rostkowska's four authors uh, emanate the power of the sensual. They seem to be inviting touch and caress. Marble, marble appears to be coming to life in her hands and to breathe. Even her abstractions remain organic as if under earth taken out of the forms of plant and landscape, the end of quotation. San Lazzaro regarded them as an experience of the sensual touch. In 1960, during a collective show titled Forms and uh, Reliefs at the Ventieme Siecle Gallery in Paris, Maria Paparostkowska exhibited her work, for example, next to Arps. Six years, six, year later, six years later, the author of the work to be exposed in the woods successfully recommended her for the prestigious award granted by the William and Noma Copley Foundation. What sets the two artists apart? 
despite the large number of similarities, is the attitude to manual work. Pa uh, Papa Rostkowska pays a lot of heed to direct, to direct contact with her own work. Arp, in turn, in 1962, opposed the notion that marble sculpture must be made by himself to be his sculpture. Both, however, liked round bases and sometimes used, used pink stone, probably treating the color as a hue adding life and carnality to sculptures and enhancing their tactile features. I would moreover point out as inspiring for Polish artists, Arp's understanding, uh, understanding of space. Um, and his introduction into his work of apertures of organic shapes. In a dualist approach, Arp's words seemed permanently variable and all the time in some process. Biomorphic forms were to be ultimate reflection of its essence. The apertures used by the artist since 19. Uh, 24 in reliefs and since 19 eternal 32 in sculptures were used to be represent being seen as eternal and infinite free from the conditioning of the empirical world integrating into the work of empty places allows the artist to express both realms in a single works according to Rudolf Suter Arp does not represent being since it cannot be represented and depicted. However, empty forms facilitate the transfer of an imitation of what is unrepresentable and un invisible. The absence of the tangible and visible may, however, indicate the presence of something intangible and invisible. Arp's empty forms are then, as a rule, related not so much to natural forms or the visible and transient, wor transient world, but to aspects connected with transcendence. Uwe Schramm stresses the former consequences of using apertures which are revealed in the absence of illusionist space, in the clear out boundaries of the work and in the overlaps of the space of the work and that of the viewer. In his Strasbourg configuration, Arp wrote, Weißt du, die Natur ist ein Knopf, weißt du, die Natur ist ein schwarzes Loch, weißt du, die, weißt du, die Kunst ist ein schwarzes Loch, in jedem Loch ist eine Wolke, modelliere mir ein Loch in einem Loch und in diesem Loch zwei Lücher und in jedem diesem, dieser zwei Lücher vier Lücher und in jedem dieser vier Lücher fünf Lücher. Arp seems to be possessed by the idea of multiplying apertures and probably pursu uh, pursuing infinity through it. A similar understanding of empty space can be found um, in statements made by Jan, Jan Berdyshak, for whom it was a primordial being. Hence, all the material parts of uh, his works were to expose the presence of space as some kind of being rather than to stress their own tangible presence which is exemplified by an object from the rest of the rest series uh, apart from aspects uh, related to transcendence the measures resulted uh, the measures resulted as in arp in the obliteration of the works boundaries in the overlap with the environment and more intense interaction with the recipient a biomorphic opening of the forms of sculpture is used by Maya, Maria Yarema in her dance. The subject matter of this small complex work installed on a round base is, however, the dancing movement of bodies. Space flows into overlapping smooth outlines of apertures dances with the entire figure. Yarema plays with arps forms in a slightly subversive manner, ignoring his idea of immutable and infinite space. In turn, Penetrations 1 and Penetration 7 by Yarema already point to another question, which can be interpreted as a dialogue with Arp, nam namely a pursuit of, uh, pursuit of the layered work built of superimposed biomorphic shapes. Forms overlap and make up optically movable and fluid, nearly viable amoeba-like visual environments. 
Moreover, Penetration 7 resembles scattered strips of colored papers, bringing to mind Arps and his wife Sophie Teuber Arps' experiments with chance. According to the artist, chance is in the art of our time is nothing accidental, but rather a gift of the muses. Those, uh, those who follow the law of chance create pure life. During the exhibition A Geometry, Hans Arp in Poland, Yarema, Yarema's Penetration 7 is visually akin to, the, uh, to Papier de Chiré. The Polish artist's fascination with the accidental can be found, moreover, in her creative method of monotype. Chance, an inseparable element of monotype, was typed by her with a deliberate construction of forms painted with gouache and watercolor. The multiple layers uh, characteristic of ARP, uh, uh, of ARP are taken advantage of also by Pinińska Beres and Jan Berdyszak. Both greedy dreams and the rest of the rest multiply and superimpose elements of organic outlines transcending surface towards three dimensions. A similar strategy is applied in the composition of one work by Bolesław Utkin titled In the Sun White. The Łódź-based artist, closely linked with the circle of Władysław Strzemiński, pursues organic rhythms, crea creating white reliefs whose monochromatic aspects, like in many wooden and aluminium reliefs by Arp, is conductive to, uh, to a concentration and on biomorphic forms. The bio biomorphic layers of Arp's works inspired also Jerzy Gurawski, who in 1971 designed the set for Forefathers Eve after Adam Mickiewicz, directed by Jerzy Grotowski. The drawing depicts a rectangular plan of space made up of organic forms. The form is multilayered at the shorter side and is lower in, uh, lower in the center, limited to a single layer. The wooden model made on the basis of, the, of, of a sketch in the collection of the center of Polish stage sets in Katowice into the symbols Arp's reliefs. The visual dynamics of wavy lines translate into the stage movement of the actors and their inter interaction uh, with the audience. The founder of a uh, geometry, as perceived by Brzenkowski, Arp continues to initiate with his art multifaceted uh, dialogues with Polish neo-avant-garde. He continues to be rediscovered also by the young generation of artists in Poland, but this would be the issue perhaps for the next conference, Arp after 2000. Thank you for your attention. Very good. This was exactly within 30 minutes. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I was, it was very intriguing. You know, the, the one speaker, you know, uh, uh, just pushes the chair away. The other one is just ignoring it. My signs, so it's okay. Any questions or remarks? <clears throat> Could I <clears throat> thank you very much for a fascinating talk. And may I ask you a question about this word biomorphism? The question, really, if you can answer, is maybe too, too big a question, but does, was the language of biomorphism used amongst the artists that you mentioned? Because I asked the question simply because I don't think it was one of Arp's. It didn't enter into Arp's own language, mm -hmm. so, um, really. And I, I know it was taken up having been introduced by the English critic Grigson and then Barr and other people, but, but was it adopted amongst artists in, in Poland? Mm -hmm. So Władysław Strzemiński used the term organic and um, biomorphic, I'm not think so, but um, from a um, contemporary perspective, we use this term in the context of um, the works uh, made by Polish artists in the 20s and in the 30s. Uh, but um, also, I think for Polish artists, uh, 
uh, was the word a geometry uh, very important. So Jan Jankowski proposed this uh, term in 1936 in the text uh, about Hans Arp and um, he uh, wrote Hans Arp invented a geometric sculpture and I think it was um, a kind, um, so he tried to uh, propose a new term, new notion, how to describe uh, such a form because um, for ARP this kind of organic or biomorphic form was very important and I think uh, ARP was um, captivated by this term because um, in uh, 1940 he created a sculpture, uh, a sculpture and uh, the title is uh, uh, a geometric, uh, geometric, a geometric. Uh, so I think he was inspired by this Polish poet and art critic, and uh, giving the title or using uh, in the title of the exhibition in Poznan this term a geometry, we try to um, we try to to uh, to make our attention that we have such a term in art history because uh, it was forgotten. So, uh, and biomorphism, of course, we use it from this perspective. But uh, Alina Shapochnikov uh, used the term biological uh, more than biomorphic and organic. So, Władysław Strzemiński. Uh, you can uh, see one um, painting uh, of him here, uh, here at, uh, in, the, in the, at the museum, and it was a gift from uh, for Arp. So it's also a very important connection. And also the second painting by Stajewski was also a gift uh, for uh, Hans Arp. But uh, in the painting of um, Strzemiński, you can see this uh, so-called unism. And um, it was uh, it was uh, described by uh, Strzemiński as very very organic. It, uh, from his perspective, it was uh, actually an essence of organicity. Any more questions, remarks? Yes, we have somebody. Thank you. This is a question uh, for both you and Eloisa, I really appreciate that you've both brought women artists to the foreground in your presentations. And I wondered if these artists in their reception of ARP's work, these women artists, whether uh, gender played a role in their um, adoption or kind of influence of his visual language on their own work. So. Sorry, could you repeat the last part of it? Well, yeah, just, um, just my question is, what role perhaps in Ligia Clark's example for you, um, did her own gender or perceptions of gender in, the, in ARP's biomorphism play a role in, in the influence? Um, it's an interesting question because uh, she actually uh, would, uh, was used to use the metaphor of womb to talk about her work and the cocoons also. So I think it's one important point uh, that put them in touch also. Uh, and even the idea of, uh, in our ARP of um, uh, the growing up of forms um, uh, of nature, of the forms in movement or in, in, in transformation that we can see in some of his works, I think is something that it's important to Ligia Clark too. But it is very interesting to see, to think about the, the same metaphors, the same um, uh, names sometimes, like the question of one, but as I told. Yeah. For the Polish. So I was, it wasn't, <laughs> because I think it's uh, obvious uh, if I uh, focus on hepticity, uh, I deal uh, automatically a lot of uh, 
uh, art uh, made by women. So I like it very much and uh, I think it corresponds with the statement of art, uh, of Arp because he said I'm uh, a great uh, he, she, it. So uh, I think uh, he was uh, a little bit uh, conscious of uh, this uh, uh, correlations between uh, gender and I think uh, he was uh, conscious that he didn't create uh, an art uh, created by macho and, and he's inspiring for women art it's very inspiring okay may I suggest that we do the rest of the discussions questions and so on with the coffee now thank you good <laughs> thank you Thank you.